Today, we're going to talk about the science of weight loss and really understand how your body burns fat. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Marvis, and I'm a board-certified family and lifestyle medicine physician and have spent decades helping people lose weight from 5 to 350 pounds. Yes, absolutely. One person lost 350 pounds. So the really important thing here is to understand that this can be broken down into a way that you can understand it and utilize the science to your advantage, understanding what's going on in your body and knowing how to implement actions that actually work for you. Everybody's a little bit different, but there are some basic universal principles that we're going to go over. And at the end, you can learn how I had to sign up for my free masterclass, which will show you exactly how to personalize the information you're about to learn. So let me pull up my notes. All right. So first of all, you know, understanding weight loss can be <laughs> like daunting, right? So you hear so many things, this blog, this doctor, this whatever. Well, let's just look at the science. What does the physiology say? Well, it's really important to understand at its core, weight loss boils down to just a few fundamental biological processes, right? So let's talk about this in a very straightforward and easy to understand way. First of all, what is fat? Let's just Get down to the basics here. So first, let's define what fat is, right? So fat or otherwise known as adipose tissue is the body's way of storing energy, right? It accumulates when they, we consume more calories or more energy than we expend. And then this stored energy is really essential for survival. It's meant to be there for days of where we didn't have food, days of famine. Of course, now we live in a day of surplus, so it's a little bit different, but our bodies are still the same. So the stored energy is essential, like I said, for survival. And it, like I said, it provides that reserve for the body when it can tap into when periods of low food availability. So what are the role of calories? So let's think about calories as units of energy, right? So when we eat food, our bodies convert it into calories, right? Which fuel everything we do from breathing and thinking. Did you know the brain uses 20% of your glucose every single day? Mind boggling literally mind-boggling and from running to lifting weights like all of your processes and all of your activities will go towards utilizing calories so to lose weight the calories we consume must be less than the calories that we burn so that is where we get this energy deficit right prompting the body to use its fat stores for fuel and i know there's some nuances to it and we're going to get to that but just bear with me. So how does your body actually burn fat? Let's, let's break that down. So first of all, you have step one, you have a caloric deficit and what we call lipolysis, right? So when you create an energy deficit, your body initiates what we call that lipolysis. This is the breakdown of fats or lipids in uh, stored that are stored in the fat cells and hormones such as adrenaline and norepinephrine signal your fat cells or your adipose tissue to release stored triglycerides. Now that may sound familiar because that will be on your cholesterol panel that your doctor runs probably annually. Now these triglycerides are then broken down into what we call glycerol and free fatty acids. And that enters into the bloodstream. So you have hormones from the calorie deficit and that says, yo, I need you guys to release the energy. So what is going on after that? So we have this breakdown of triglycerides and it's in the blood. So you have a transport to cells, right? So once in the bloodstream, the free fatty acids and the glycerol uh, travel to tissues that need energy, such as your muscles and your liver and some other things. But those are the big players here in utilizing calories. Um, once there, they are transported into the cells and then moved into these little things called mitochondria, we call them the powerhouse of the cell. And we're about to go into why is that considered the powerhouse of the cell? Well, there's a thing that next step is called beta oxidation and the Krebs cycle. If ever you were a biology major, the Krebs cycle was a behemoth of a thing to memorize, but we're gonna break it down simply. Inside the mitochondria, the free fatty acids undergo a process called beta oxidation, which converts them from uh, basically into acetyl-CoA molecules. Don't need to know what that is necessarily, but just know that that's a part of the process. Now, those molecules then enter into the Krebs cycle or also called the citric acid cycle in a series of chemical reactions 
that was a pain to memorize, <laughs> that produced what we call ATP, and that's adenosine triphosphate. That is the primary energy currency of the cell. And when I'm talking about, it's like dollars of energy, right? So think of this little ATP units, right, as dollars for energy, okay? Next, you get this energy production, right? So the ATP generated through the Krebs cycle powers all your cellular activities. So essentially, the body converts the stored fat into usable energy. And then this process continues, fat stores decrease, leading to your weight loss. Okay, now, of course, that's just the basics of understanding calorie deficit. Let's talk about some other factors that influence fat burning. First of all, you have your metabolism, right? So your metabolism is the rate at which your body burns calories. Now, this really plays a very crucial role. Factors such as your age, your sex, muscle mass, and genetics can really influence your metabolic rate. Generally, increasing muscle mass through things like strength training can really boost your metabolism as muscle tissues burns more calories than fat tissue. So I always tell people, think about your muscle mass as your metabolic furnace. You want more muscle mass, especially as we get older and we're at risk for things called sarcopenia, where we actually lose muscle mass. And especially if you're entering into perimenopause or menopause, so important to pay attention to that. Next is diet. Now, I'm going to mention diet here, but I'm going to go into a little bit deeper after I finish the, this next little section because I really want to expand upon this because I know there's going to generate some questions on about what I'm about to say. So first of all, the composition of your diet really matters, right? So protein, for instance, has a higher thermic effect. Basically, it burns more calories during digestion. And I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. But compared to fats and carbohydrates, it has a higher thermic effect. Moreover, balanced diets that include plenty of fiber, which only comes from plants, and healthy fats, right? Not the saturated fats, but more of the other healthier fats. And protein that doesn't have all the other things that come with it. Um, some people like to say lean protein, but I'm just like protein in general from plants is going to be lean already. This can really support your sustained energy levels and help maintain muscle mass during weight loss. Next is exercise. Of course, physical activity increases the number of calories your body burns. Cardiovascular exercises like running and swimming and cycling, they enhance that fat oxidation that we just spoke about. However, while resistance training helps build muscle, right? So you can increase your metabolic rate. So even just walking in general can be very helpful. So moving your body. And when you think about it and you look at the research, there's something special about 10,000 steps. Yes, it was a marketing ploy in the beginning, but research actually has found that it decreases your risk for dementia and some other things. So I would push yourself to move more, even if it's just in general walking. And finally, let's talk about hormonal balance. I did a video a few days ago all about hormonal weight gain. I would encourage you to watch that. But Menopause is, it's a wrecking ball, literally whoosh, <laughs> it whacks into your body and it messes things up. But hormones can significantly, significantly affect how your body stores and burns fat. So insulin, for example, regulates blood sugar um, levels and fat storage. It When your insulin levels are high, it's saying body store fat. And that's something to consider if you're insulin resistant, right? So you're walking around at the higher level of insulin at baseline than someone who's more insulin sensitive. So we're already seeing an issue with that. So for example, if I have someone who has type two diabetes and I've seen, it's one of most of my patients have some type of insulin resistance. If they're on insulin, I try to get them off insulin as quickly as possible, especially when they need to lose weight. And the reason is when you're injecting insulin, it's just like your body producing a bunch of insulin. So as you add more insulin, and you can ask anybody who's ever taken insulin who has type 2 diabetes, they absolutely will gain significant more weight than they did previously to being where they didn't have insulin. So yes, it's absolutely needed at times, but the sooner we can get someone moving in the right direction with their diet and activity and get them off the insulin, it will definitely rap more rapidly increase their weight loss. I've seen it over and over and over again, like thousands of times. So the other things is things like cortisol, which can be affected by chronic stress, sleep issues, 
that can also cause it the lack of estrogen and progesterone, which we spoke about in the hormonal weight loss or hormonal weight gain video, um, but also thyroid hormone, right? So I've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism for over four minutes. Understanding of what that actually is, because I know you guys are having questions. Absolutely. And by the way, if you have any questions, please comment below, share this video, subscribe. I would love to learn what you want to know more about, and I will create those videos for you. Um, but let's talk about what the thermic effect of food. It refers to basically, it's the amount of energy required to digest, absorb, and process nutrients um, from your meals. So the different macronutrients have different thermic effects. And so let's talk about protein. So the thermic effect of protein is the highest among your macronutrients, which are protein, carbohydrates, and fats, right? So approximately 20 to 30% of your calories um, from protein are used during digestion and metabolism. And that means if you consume 100 calories of protein, about 20 to 30 calories roughly are burned just to process it. Next, you have your carbohydrates. So the thermic effect for carbohydrates is five to 10%. Therefore, out of 100 calories, maybe five to 10 are required for that digestion. And then fats actually have the lowest thermic effect, right? So maybe zero to 3%. So 100 calories of fat requires maybe zero to three calories to digest. And because of the higher thermic effect, diets higher in protein tend to boost your metabolism slightly and contribute more to weight loss. And again, it also helps satiate you. Um, so what do I mean by balance? What does all that look like? So lean proteins mean things like, of course, I'm going to talk about tofu and legumes. Those are excellent sources of what we describe as lean, lean protein in that sense. Yes, tofu and some soybeans can have a little bit higher fat, but again, it's not significant enough that I would tell someone not to. Plus, soy has such a, a benefit of so many other things. Um, but consuming adequate protein is really important to preserve muscle mass during weight loss. And so minimally, you should be shooting for one gram of protein per kilogram or 2.2 pounds of your ideal body weight. And again, that's just a general rule to get started. There's lots of other things to consider, um, but it's really important because as you are in a slightly caloric deficit and you're maybe doing some resistance training to maintain or build muscle mass, you want enough protein to adequately preserve that muscle mass and help growth in general. So you can lose more fat and maintain or build some muscle as you're going along. Again, like I said, protein, absolutely. If I increase protein in someone's um, meals, you will see an improvement in satiety and a decrease in cravings. I've seen it across the board. It happens almost every single time. Um, next is fiber, right? So dietary fiber found in your all your plants. It only comes from plants. It doesn't come from animal products. Fiber is crucial for your digestive health, right? And it slows down the digestive process, um, which helps maintain your stable blood sugar levels. It kind of prolongs that feeling of fullness and calorie control. So high fiber foods are most often lower in calories and much more filling. So people are like, man, I can eat more food and get you know, more bang for the calories, so to speak, right? They feel fuller. They're stretching the stomach. Those receptors are telling the brain, hey, I'm full. It's low inflammatory foods. Again, so many beautiful things come from a whole food plant-based diet. Next are the healthy fats, right? So let's talk about unsaturated fats. So sources of healthy fats include avocados, nuts, and seeds. Um, now these fats are really essential for maintaining your cell structure and function, um, support brain health and providing long lasting energy. It also helps the satiety. They're also very interesting. They help you absorb certain vitamins like A, D, E, and K. Um, so again, there's some interesting things about making sure you have healthy fats. Some people are really religious about like so minimal fat as possible. I don't think that's a healthy way to approach this, right? So when you're consuming health, you want, when you're consuming fat, we want to be healthy fats. We don't want things high in saturated fats, which typically come from high animal products or certain oils, especially things like coconut oil. We should be avoiding the coconut oil at all costs. Um, next is carbohydrates. So let's talk about complex carbohydrates. So foods like whole grains, vegetables, legumes, or beans, they really provide that steady release of energy, right? Due to their high fiber content and they slow digestion. So this really helps maintain that stable blood sugar, avoiding energy spikes and crashes, which can make you feel fatigued and craving and just like ugh, what people describe as hangry. 
yeah, let's try to avoid that. Um, then there's simple carbohydrates, right? So it's important to limit your simple sugars. So this is going to be found in sweets, ultra processed foods, and things like um, sugar sweetened beverages like Coke and, you know, everything, any, probably anything you can get at Starbucks other than teas. <laughs> um, certain things like natural sources of fruits can provide quick energy and essential vitamins. So you shouldn't be afraid of fruit. Um, because it also comes in a bigger package. There's more stuff going on here. There's micronutrients along with macronutrients. So putting it all together, you want higher protein, high fiber, healthy fats, but not excessive, and then complex carbohydrates, which points to a whole food plant-based diet. So I tried to, there's a lot of information in one video. I'm sorry if I spoke really fast, but I really wanted to highlight everything for you in a condensed package as much as possible. If you want to learn more how you can apply this type of science to your body, because everybody's a little bit different, absolutely sign up for my free masterclass, the five steps to master your metabolism and lose weight. And I talk about the four biggest mistakes that people make in their weight loss journey. So I hope to see you there. And as always, I'm so thankful for spending, uh, you're spending time with me and I hope you found this helpful. And again, please comment below. Love to hear from you guys. I read every single comment and try to respond if possible. And as always, I'm sending you joy, love, peace, and healing. Because honestly, we all need more of that in our lives every single day. So you guys have a good one. And I will see you next time.